Today, we want to teach you how to use Sichuan peppercorns in pastries. First, going over Jialian Su, a super classic Chinese cookie that you can find in various corners of the country, followed by an addictively chewy bun from the Yunnan province called Huibing that might just be my personal favorite application. But before we get into these, I do know that for a solid chunk of you guys, this whole idea of a Sichuan peppercorn dessert might be striking you as a little on the odd side. And for that, you're totally forgiven. Because Sichuan peppercorn is probably one of the most misunderstood Chinese ingredients today online, in no small part because of its terribly translated English language name. You see, Sichuan peppercorn technically isn't even a peppercorn, nor is it originally from Sichuan. The Chinese name is huajiao, or flower pepper. And historically, it's been an ingredient used for its floral fragrance. Its use dates all the way back to the Warring States period. It featured heavily in imperial cuisine and stuff like master stocks. And at times, it was even used to perfume the walls of the royal court. These days, you can find them pretty much everywhere in China, but it's probably still fair to say that the ingredients particularly loved in Sichuan. That said, this widespread idea that Sichuan peppercorn, it is numbing and it is hot, is pretty far from correct. They're used to balance the heat of the chili, not amp it up. And while I think everyone's starting to familiarize themselves with Sichuanese mala these days, that numbing spicy sensation from a Chongqing hot pot or a mapo tofu, the ingredients actually only even numbing if it's used in quantity. It's one leg of Chinese five spice, not numbing. It's sometimes soaked and then used in marinades, also with no sort of numbing. And it's also sometimes used in pastries, also without much of a numbing sensation. Now, for both of our dishes today, what we'll be using is Sichuan peppercorn oil, mostly for color because we don't want a bunch of little specks in our otherwise white and fluffy buns. You should be able to find Sichuan peppercorn oil at most Chinese supermarkets or alternatively online. The stuff's usually made by frying fresh Sichuan peppercorns at a relatively low temperature. So unless you happen to have a huajiao tree out in your backyard, just buy the stuff and have it on hand. So then, starting off with the cookie, because this one's easy enough. To make it to a bowl, first toss in 30 grams worth of beaten egg, together with 70 grams of sugar and 6 grams of salt. Then, just mix those three all together. And while a hand mixer would definitely make quick work of this all, we don't own one, so whipping it with chopsticks will take about 5 minutes for everything to get incorporated and the egg to get slightly foamy. Then, at this point, go in with your oils. 16 grams Sichuan peppercorn oil, together with 84 grams of lard. And for the vegetarians in the room, swapping that lard for ghee would also be quite tasty. Give that a mix until the oil's absorbed and the batter's gotten uniform. And then, your dry ingredients. 200 grams of cake flour, 2 grams of baking powder, 2 grams of baking soda, and 10 grams of milk powder. And just sift that all into your bowl. Then, with a spatula, start to gently fold that all together until it's combined about two minutes or so, and then cover and toss in the fridge for an hour in a hot climate, or 15 minutes in a cool one, to chill right down. After that time, toss a couple sheets of plastic wrap onto your work surface, and lay your dough on. Give the thing a quick press flat, then cover it with your plastic wrap, form it into a rough rectangle, and start to roll it out. You'll be looking for something about a half centimeter thick in the end, so once you're there, just pop that back into the fridge for another quick 15 minutes if you're in a tropical climate like us, or else you can just charge forward with the shaping. Either way, just unwrap that guy, and with a bench scraper, first just slice that all vertically into about 3 centimeter sections, then followed by some horizontal cuts to get cookies that are roughly 4 by 3. Then carefully transfer those onto a baking tray, and once you've worked through them all, we can hit it with a final egg wash. This was just what was left over from a whole egg after we took out that 30 grams from before. And once those are good and brushed, move them into a 175 Celsius preheated oven for 13 minutes. Then, after that time, take those guys out and let them cool down on a cooling rack. And once they're completely cool to the touch, just remove those cookies and toss them on a plate. Now, just to get our expectations straight here, do try to internalize this sort of Chinese subing as kind of like a shortbread. Definitely nothing like a chewy American-style cookie. And just like a shortbread, they are super delicious, but a little on the dry side. 
so I'd personally recommend eating these alongside a cup of tea. That said, if you are in the market for a soft, chewy Sichuan peppercorn pastry, those buns from before definitely more than fit the bill. They're basically impossible not to adore, but they will be a touch more work to get to this kind of chewy end result. So, to make them, to a bowl, first toss in 200 grams of bread flour, 3 grams of yeast, 6 grams of salt, 36 grams of sugar, 20 grams of milk powder, and 110 grams of water. Then, just mix that all together until you get a rough, shaggy dough like so. Then just give it a quick, simple knead for a minute or two to get it into a rough ball. Now, to get this all nice and chewy, we'll be leaning on two kneading techniques today. The first one, I don't think has much of an English language analog, but in Chinese, the motion's called chai mian, and you do it by sort of smearing the dough thin against your work surface, rolling it all up, turning it 45 degrees, and repeating. This not only kneads, but helps the dough become properly homogenous. So after about five minutes of that motion, you should be looking at something that's gotten significantly less craggly. And at this point, we can start the second kneading technique, slapping. Now, this sort of slapping is sort of like the French method on easy mode, because our dough's really not wet in the least. What you'll do is lift the dough up to shoulder height, slap it against the counter, fold the edge of the dough about halfway in, then twist. Compared to a more basic kneading motion, this slapping seems to help the gluten align a good bit more efficiently. We couldn't really find anything on the science there, if at all, but just trust that it will save you a bit of time. It'll be done after about 100 slaps, or when it's at the point where you can easily see your fingers through the dough like this if you stretched it into a film. Then, at that point, toss it back into your bowl, and then go in with 14 grams of Sichuan peppercorn oil and 10 grams of lard. Incorporate those oils into the dough in the same way, and once it's no longer obviously oily looking, after about five minutes, we can slap that all once again. Just slap 200 more times in total, which I know sounds like a lot, but if you get in a groove, you should be able to sort it in about five minutes. Now, of course, if you don't like kneading by hand, you can always swap to a stand mixer. Just mix on speed two for that first bit and speed five whenever we call for slapping. You'll know you're done once you've gotten to that same stretchy stage as before, and when you tear it, it can form a relatively smooth hole like so. Then just form it all into a smooth ball, toss it into a bowl, and let it ferment for one hour, or until it's doubled in size. Then, after that time, just take that out and start to portion. We'll be aiming for 15 gram balls each, so once you've got all those, shape them by first pressing them flat then going around the edges, folding them in in order to get a rough ball. Then sort of seal it by continuously pinching and twisting the very end of it like so, and toss that seam side down onto a baking tray. Work through all your buns, and then let those sit for 15 minutes to let the dough relax. Then, after that time, we'll shape those all one more time. So, take a bun, flip to get it seam side up, and repeat that process. Fold those edges in, Twist the very top of it, flip it onto your work surface, and sort of roll it a touch to seal that seam the best you can. The purpose of doing this folding motion twice is so that we can get nice, smooth, even balls in the end. So let that proof for a final 30. Or once it's at the point where the dough can slowly bounce back if you pressed it in with your finger, and at this point, we can bake. So this time, 130 centigrade oven, preheated obviously, and let those bake for 12 minutes. And then, after that time, just take them out, let them cool, and you've got yourself a delicious, super chewy Sichuan peppercorn huibing. So besides being used to flavor pastries in oil form, uh, hua jiao corns are also often used as a filling for other pastries. Uh, it's often mixed with black sesame seeds, salt, and or sugar and put it into a puff pastry. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.